In this video we will discuss the water budget and how this relates to our water resources and environmental engineering section for the FE exam. So we know the water budget, sometimes called the water balance, is going to be the balance between the inputs and outputs and this is known as the water balance or budget. So we know this water budget affects how much water is stored in a system and this is based on the law of conservation of mass which means that the mass of any one element at the beginning of a reaction will equal to the mass of that element at the end of the reaction. So whatever comes in has to come out. So it's the law of conservation of mass. So we know that water budgets are used to understand the movement of water into and out of a watershed. So we'll look at an example below for a stream. And we know this is related. An analogy can be given to a financial budget so you might have your own financial budget we know we will consider the inflows the storage and the outflows and this relates to a financial budget where we consider the income which is going to be the inflow the account balance is going to be the storage and the expenses will be the outflows so once again for a water budget we consider inflows, storage and outflows for a financial budget, we're going to consider the income relating it to inflows. Account balance is going to be the storage and expenses will be the outflows. So we know unlike a bank account, we do not have any perfect information about the inflows and outflows of water into and out of the storage or a watershed. So we rely heavily on models that are continuously updated and changing. So the general equation provided to us on the FE exam in our reference book or you can find this online or in your water resources book for hydrology is going to be this. We have surface water hydraulic budget and we know the changes storage on the right will depend on this side which denotes all of our inflows and all of our outflows. So inflows is going to be positive and outflows are going to be negative. So we're given pre precipitation, Q sub in is the surface water into the system, Q out is the surface water out of the system. This is essentially our runoff. So runoff into and runoff out to. And we have groundwater flow into the system. And we have surface evaporation. We have transpiration, infiltration, and this is going to be our change in storage. So let's say we're looking specifically at a stream. This is what we're using our as our reservoir that we're going to analyze for storage. So we know it's going to have a change in storage dependent on the inflows and outflows, right? So this is our stream. This is just a perspective view, but I'm going to look at a side view here. So we're looking at a side view of this stream. So what we have is our stream, which has a change in storage. And this change in storage, you can see how there are inflows, which is the precipitation, and we have outflows, for example, the surface evaporation. So we know the inflows are going to be positive. So let's denote all of our positive values. It's going to be our P, Q, N, and our Q sub G. Our P is precipitation, which is the snow or rainfall. Q sub N is going to be the surface water flow into the system, essentially the runoff into the system and we have the q sub g which is the groundwater flow into the system q sub g so if we look above our precipitation is going to be this it goes into the stream surface water inflow is going to be this it goes in and we have groundwater flow into the system which goes in so those are all positive now looking at the outflows we're going to have the negative we're going to have negative Q out, which is the water, surface water flow out the system. Negative E sub S, which is the surface evaporation. Negative T sub S, which is transpiration. And negative I, which is infiltration. So for that, we'll denote these as we have infiltration. It comes out, so it's going to be negative. We have surface evaporation, so that's going to be negative as well. It comes out, so the evaporation can be from the surface or from the soil. So we know there's going to be the water in the soil changes to a gas as the ground surface is going to warm up. 
So we have gas evaporating essentially. Then we have transpiration that looks specifically at the plants or vegetation and we know that the water vapor is going to escape from the pores under the leaves. So what happens here is we have if you look at the side view we have the ground surface and we know the soil moisture the soil is going to have some moisture and the moisture is going to travel through the root then eventually it ends up at the leaves and from the leaves we have transpiration which water vapor is going to escape from the pores under the leaves so that's what we mean by transpiration then the other is going to be infiltration so simply we know for the stream you're going to have some in infiltration leaving the stream and also so we considered this and t sub s we've considered infiltration and the last thing is going to be q out which is the runoff out so surface outflow so those are all negative we have four of them when we're looking just using this equation for a stream as given in our reference book for the fe exam so we know we can note that the change in storage at the end of the day that's what we're gonna be looking at we know the inflow if the inflow is greater than the outflow we have our change in storage which is going to increase so you have more coming in so your change in storage will increase if the inflow is less than the outflow your change in storage will decrease and if the inflow equals to the outflow you have equilibrium the change in storage does not change so that's all for this video we talked about the water balance we've covered the basics and i hope this helps you study for your fe exam and also your water resources or hydrology class.